Well, good afternoon, everybody. Well, it's afternoon for me. Hi, I'm Sally Roper, and I'm coming to you from Ocho Rios in Jamaica, my humble little studio. Uh, let me just show you around a little bit. This is actually the sales section of my studio where I have all the work and the pieces that I have worked on over the, over the last couple of years. And uh, some of you might even recognize these pieces here because they were unloaded in my last kiln where I was featuring my uh, the 361 clay and um, this is a blue glaze that I used on it. Anyway, um, today I'm going to unload a kiln. It is mostly uh, commissioned work for a uh, wholesale outlet not a wholesale outlet, is a retail outlet in Kingston. It is the only company in Kingston that I, I, um, I sell my work to in wholesale. Um, so they're kind of lucky anyway. I have an order to fill so they can stock up their shelves for stuff for Christmas. And I'm going to share that with you. Here is my kiln. Down here I have a Scut 1027. And uh, it, is, it is perfect. It, it, it's just a perfect size kiln for me because the amount of uh, work that I have, I can accumulate things, I can do large pieces, so it really works well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, open up the kiln. I've had a little tiny sneaky peek at, uh, at the very top shelf, and um, you don't really see anything in it. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, move my camera again. So what I'll do is I'll just bring the pieces to you. So I'm gonna keep this short. I'm gonna move through the pieces quickly and um, let's get going. So what I made were some olive dishes and some garlic dishes. These are dishes that you would put oil into on the bottom. This one is one that you would use to macerate a, um, a clove of garlic. So you would just cut it across lengthwise, uh, sorry, a, a, across if this is your if this is your piece of garlic you cut it crosswise and then what you do is you just rub it onto onto that grid that's there it's kind of I can't say sharp but it's got enough of a ridge where it's going to break down the garlic and then you put in a little bit of oil this is um, just an olive oil dish or it can be a soap dish it can be any kind of dish but they are uh, probably about four and a half maybe five inches wide. Now this one is done in opulence sea spray and I uh, using the Amico velvet underglazes I just did a little bit of hand painting on the olives there and um, this one I just used the end of a paintbrush and I just kind of did a little dig out to create the roughness on that. So that's how I did those ones. This is another garlic dish in sea spray. I'm trying to get the glare off of it, so it's how I hold it there. That's probably better. And this is um, opulence. Um, when I started out doing my pottery, I used opulence glazes. Opulence is a company that's from Tennessee. And uh, being in Jamaica, I have to import. So it doesn't really matter where I get my glazes from anywhere and um, I have been using opulence now for over 10 years. I'm moving slightly over to some of the other or incorporating some of the other glaze companies like Mako, Amico, and Spectrum and adding those now into my repertoire. So you'll see a bit of those coming up. Anyway, this is more of the sea spray. This is really my go-to. This is a flower, same thing. It's just a, little, a small little dish. So these were the three designs I did. And there's another one, and again I use the the velvet underglaze, and I just paint it on the flowers. And this is another sea spray garlic dish. These work really well if you like crushed garlic um, in in your um, in your food. It just works really really nicely. It really does a great job of macerating, and I use a I use a glaze that that will break well over the ridges because if it's too soft or there's too heavy of a coating, the, the garlic won't break down. So it, it, this is very functional. It can also work really well as a soap dish. All right, now my daughter has asked me to make these. Um, as you know, no, these ones I lie. 
I'm, I've made them, I, I have yet to uh, fire them. Anyway, these are, um, I used uh, Laguna Sybil Speck clay, which is a, just kind of an off-white clay, but it's got the speckles in it. I find it very easy to work with. It's got a very small amount of grog in the, in the clay, but I do like how the speckles come through. Now this is um, marshmallow again. It's an opulence glaze. And uh, these ones, so I made a small one and a large one, which is what my client asked for. And I have a bunch of those. And those look really, really nice if you put a little, uh, if you put a little tea light or a string of fairy lights in there, they light up so beautifully at night. But anyway, and the cutouts in the rows are just totally random. It's just however I feel whether I want to do two, four, five, or three um, dots. But anyway, that's them there. And um, I wish I could show you how they light up, but I have, I have eight of them, so there's just two more. And the last two, oh no, this is six and seven. I think there's another one further down. So I just made them in two sizes, but you can really make them in any size you want. Ah, uh, now I'm already down one shelf. Now this, I'll just go lightly on this. I've talked about this before. This is my uh, witness cone. Because um, I'm using B-Mix 5, the best temperature to fire my kiln at is cone 5. And the glazes that I'm using work really well at five and six. I've, um, I'm gonna maybe try and do a, um, a firing to cone six and to really test out the difference. Uh, I'm not good at testing. It's like practicing in sports. I hated practicing. I just love to play the game. And I kind of like that with my pottery. I really hate the testing part of it, but I like the end result. So I guess it's just something that I have to do anyway. This is the, um, the five witness cone and this is the six witness cone. So you can see that the six has just started to bend. The five is all the way over. Now, in order to do a perfect cone five, it should end, the point should end about there, but because it's dropped down and is actually touching the surface of the, um, the little piece of, um, of broken pottery, <laughs> um, that uh, I have probably about a five and a half because this six is only bent so far. If it had bent all the way over, probably even touching there, I would say I reach cone six. So I'd say this is a perfect five and a half. So the witness cones tell me the heat work that was achieved in my, uh, my kiln. I did set it to cone five medium on their preset, on Sket's preset program. And I... Um, I held it for, I believe, 10 minutes. So that gives it that time for the heat uh, just to completely fill the, uh, the inside of the kiln and get all the pieces to the same temperature. I have advancer shelves. Anybody, if you can afford it, get it because it has saved me countless times, uh, although it shouldn't have to, but it does. Anyway, all right. All right, so I have made, um, I think I posted a picture um, on one of my sites. I made this little dish. It's an octagon. Uh, it is about um, six inches wide at the most. It, I'm going to tell you what, this is absolutely perfect. Um, I have a hibiscus stamp and um, I have glazed this in, I have dipping glazes. I love to dip. I'm not very good at brushing. So this is Whispering Plum by Amico, and uh, it is in their Celadon glaze line. Uh, not Whispering Plum, we was a Weeping Plum, Weeping Plum. My apologies for getting the wrong name, but I absolutely love how it broke into the into the impression that I made with a with this hibiscus cookie cutter. Now because I live in Jamaica, hibiscus is everywhere. So. This is again another one of uh, Weeping Plum, and this is um, uh, Sharon Hoppy. Uh, this is one of her rolling. It's the Baroque rolling pin, and it is just a little small. Again, it's another six inch, di six inch dish with a little bit of texture, but uh, again, I dipped it. I dipped it for probably two seconds at most, and, uh, and I, it, I'm just so pleased at how these turned out. I'm almost sorry that I have to give them away. I'm going to definitely be making more. 
Um, this is a, another olive dish, and this is dipped in um, Opulence's turquoise. So it's a beautiful, uh, I was asked to get bright colors. I know you're heading all into the fall and into Halloween and into Christmas, but in Jamaica, we stay tropical all year round. So I'm keeping my colors as bright as they can. This is another one in turquoise. And this is um, another rolling pin. I believe this one is actually Jess, Jessica Putnam Phillips. I think this is one of her designs. Anyway, I'm really, really pleased how this turned out. Uh, man, uh, wow. And this is um, the hummingbird one. It's, again, it's Sharon Hoppy's hummingbirds are um, everywhere in Jamaica. So you can see the uh, you can see the hummingbird here, and then into um, into the hibiscus plant that's here, and the tropical leaves that are in it. Again, this is done in turquoise. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. And this is um, another garlic dish, and this is done in opulence uh, Smoky Mountain Mist, and it breaks in kind of grays, blues, and greens. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful glaze. That gives you a true color of it. Um, well, this one I'm not so terribly thrilled about, but anyway, um, it is, um, it, it's actually not bad. It is, again, Jessica's a rolling pin. It is her cobblestone glaze on this, on the two thirds, and then the one third is the marshmallow, which is a matte white uh, by Opulence. It's the same, same glaze I used on, on these. This is marshmallow, it's a matte white, which is what my client asked for. And then I have this dot rolling pin that I bought, um, I bought at Michael's in their bakeware and uh, I did this in uh, just a celadon, a blue, uh, uh, a blue celadon glaze. And it's just, it is what it is. It's very nice. Okay. We're down a row. I have lots of trays in this, um, in this particular unloading. Okay, the next layer I have is, is some uh, taller items. So I have taller items in the bottom, which I needed to do uh, a row or two of, excuse me, of the trays. And then I have another taller one in the middle and then the top were two were, were shallow. So this is um, Opulent Sea Spray. It is a planter. This would hold uh, a six inch liner. Excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, anyway, um, yeah. So I have a hole on the bottom. I have the tray. I, whenever I use my planters with a hole, I always make a tray to match it. And I measure the bottom, and then I make a tray about a half an inch wider than the bottom of the bottom of the pot, so they really fit nicely together. And I sell them together. And this is just a cutout design. You, anybody who knows me, knows I do a lot of cutout work. And I've gotten pretty good at it over the years. And these are um, these are a wine carafe, and it says wine not. So I just happen to have a bottle of wine here in the studio, so it would just sit nicely on your table like that. And then you still get to see the label. Um, the type of wine that you're drinking, if that's important to you, that your guests know what type of wine you're serving them. So a little bit of a cutout there. And, uh, and then I drew some grapes and colored it in. So there you go, why not? I have a few of those. Okay, I have another one saying wine time. And again, it dips down a little bit in the front so you can see the front of the bottle of wine. And I drew and painted. Now, I'm no artist, um, and I'm, I'm learning by watching some of the other potters. I was a bit nervous as to how this was gonna break, but I'm really pleased at how that came out. Came out exactly as I wanted it to. 
sorry, I was a bit nervous about how that glaze was going to break over um, over the. Uh, I painted wine time and I painted the uh, the grapes or yeah the grapes with um, amico under under vel or velvet underglazes amico velvet underglazes, and I just did actually that's only one maybe two coats um, of the underglow glaze, but it broke really well. I'm, I'm really happy. This one I'm not so thrilled about. You can barely see it. it just says wine o'clock, but it's because I used um, the dark blue. And so you can't really see it. It's very, very subtle, but maybe that might be what somebody wants, but you can't even see the painting that I did for the grapes. So even though this has turned out okay, if not my favorite, and I won't be doing that again. And here is another one of the luminaries in Opulence Marshmallow and using the Sybil Spec, uh, Laguna Sybil Spec clay. And there, as you can see, my, uh, my signature is at the bottom of all of these pieces. I did, um, hey, good. I did these jars and you saw them in my last video and I really wasn't very happy um, in how they turned out, but my client wanted some more, so I made some more, and I, I did a bit of a different technique on the lid. Last time, I, I fired the lid separately, and I put it on stilts, and I got a little bit of warping. So this time, because what I was trying to do was avoid putting waxing here and waxing on the inside rim, um, so that you would have all glaze. But you know what? Keeping the lid on there helps to keep the pot round, helps to keep the lid round, and from things. So this uh, turned out really, really well. And what I have here as well is the opposite. So if you remember in the last video, if you saw it, of my kiln opening, um, these are the same, these are the same thing. So um, anyway, and again, the lid just sits in there because it's not glazed. The pieces, although they may stick together a little bit, no, it comes off pretty easily. So even though I fire that on because I've, I've done uh, waxing on the rim and on the inside of the, of the pot, the inside, oh, what is this now? This is um, Jessica's uh, cobblestone gray, and this is um, opulence marshmallow. She wanted it in the matte look, and so that's what I gave her. And I have... Um, two sets of those. So here's here's the second set. Same thing. Okay. And then I did some uh, tile tests. Um, okay, so how did I do this? They sit on a piece of the um, nichrome wire, which is easy to get. And what I do is, I only have one hand to show you, but I just rest the wire on top of a kiln post making sure that I probably could do a three inch kiln post, but I opted for four because the actual posts that held my shelf were six inches. So I had plenty of room to use this. And then I just fire them like that. And there's of course one on this end as well. And, uh, and then they just sit there and they don't move. They don't. And I make sure I don't make them too weighty uh, or too heavy because this wire will, will sag and I don't want these to slide into each other and fuse. So I only put three or four and I make sure the heaviest ones are here towards the, uh, towards the post so that it kind of absorbs some of the weight and the thinner, lighter ones I put in the middle. So I'm very careful about how I, how I put these together. And so what you see here now is, um, this is uh, Jessica Cranberry and I have texture on one side and it's flat on the other side. I hope you can see the difference in the colors. So this is dipped for three seconds for the top bit, and then I pulled it up a third, and you get another two seconds, and then I pull, and then I left it there for another two seconds. So this is probably three seconds, five, five seconds, and seven, eight seconds. So you get, um, so that's like painting on three or four layers uh, if you're brushing on glaze. So it, it all matters how you dip. But I like how this breaks on the texture again I'm trying to get the glare out so that came out really really nicely I really I really like that and this is um, this is um, 
Amico's uh, Aqua. This is um, my test thing. Again, I did the same thing, but I did three, I had dipped the whole thing in for three seconds, lifted it up, waited two seconds, lifted it up, waited two seconds. And as you know, celadons are absolutely beautiful for giving out texture in your pieces. So if you're using rolling pins or anything with texture or decoration, use your celadons because all of that is really, really nice. This is Jessica's cobblestone. Again, dip the same way. Full dip for for three seconds, lift it up for two seconds, lift it up for two more seconds. But what you lose in this is the definition of the um, of the texture. There is slight texture, but nothing uh, nothing like when you're using the celadon. There you go. There's the difference. Okay. before I pull it out to make sure that there are no posts stuck to it. You wouldn't want to pull up the shelf and have a post sticking to it and then it um, falls down on the piece of pottery that you have underneath it. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. This is um, hibiscus. Oh gosh, I just love how these came out. I'm going to make a whole lot more of this and this is just the dotted rolling pin from Wilson, I think it is, um, uh, in your, in Michael's, in the bakeware section. But that turned out really, really nice. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just incredibly impressed by how this stamp and how the texture came out on those. And I have a bunch of them. So again, this is uh, opulence sea spray, and this is opulence turquoise. I'll just blast through these. Opulence sea spray, and this one is a palm tree. It's a cookie cutter. Again, I kept it very tropical, and this is just the dot dot pin roller. So I I really 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 like how that came out. So if you want to know where I got the cookie cutters, uh, you can just uh, private message me or make a comment in, the, in, the, in this video. And uh, again, another palm tree. And I did this purposely in the sea spray green, just because palm trees are green. And again, it's a very nice, light, tropical color. My, uh, my client has um, lots of tours that come into her studio or come into her shop, so the objective was to keep the pieces small. All right. Okay, a lot of green. Again, this is the hibiscus, and a new one you haven't seen yet is a pineapple. That's really, really pretty. Again, done in opulent sea spray. Oh, this is beautiful. This is op opulent Smoky Mountain Mist. And uh, again, you can, I hope you can see it. If I get it up close enough, you can see the, the way that the glaze just colors in the, um, in the green, gray kind of in blues. And well, in person, you even see greens. This is just a beautiful glaze. Wow. Wow. turquoise and sea spray. Again, those are just cookie cutters pressed out onto slabs. This is turquoise, the hibiscus one in turquoise. And again, this is um, smoky mountain mist with the pineapple. I, I'm I'm so pleased with how those came out. I was a little concerned because of, um, of, the, of the way the, um, 
The glaze would break over texture. Okay, I'm not done. Okay, so these last pieces I have down here are mugs, and they are they are um, the same. As, well, they, she ordered them because of of, uh, of the pieces that I made last time. Anyway, this is opulence. Blue Monday. I poured it on the inside, then I dipped the rim down to into the glaze down to here, let it dry enough that I could touch it, and then using my hand inside, I just dipped it down up to here to leave this band of raw clay. So this is the um, uh, Laguna 391. It's a dark brown clay when you throw it, but it turns out it turns out pretty black. But these are just gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. These are going to hold about maybe 10, 10 ounces of coffee. And I have six of those in here. Three, four. And here are the other. Here are the other four. So they turned out. In fact, they turned out almost better than the first batch that I did. So. I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased. This turned out really, really nicely. Now I'm working on a project for my daughter. Um, my daughter Christine, as you know, won a, an Olympic gold medal and, uh, in rowing and she's bringing down some of her teammates from, uh, from the Olympics down to Jamaica for a week and we're going to go spend a week together in a villa. Uh, it's called sundown. So I made these mugs. I used. You've seen uh, if you've seen any of my earlier videos. You've seen how the uh, how I made the this with the making of the mug, the trimming. I didn't show you glazing, um, and then how I did the alphabet pass down the handle. So this is the this is the end result. And what did I do? I did um, I did a full dip in opulence sea spray, which is this green on the bottom. Then I painted half, half a strip of indigo float, and I did uh, a third of uh, a strip of indigo float, and then I did a very heavy coat of flux, and that's that's what I did here, I believe. Let me just double check. Uh, Christine's. Okay. No, seaweed. I lie. I lie. Okay, let me go. Let me go back. I did a full dip in opulence. I did two thirds sea spray. Uh, sorry, one half sea spray, one third sea spray. So there's a full dip of opulence sea spray. Oh my God, I'm getting myself all twisted up, and I'll, I don't even know how to cut this out. So bear with me. Let me go over this again. Full dip in in opulence sea spray. Then I paint, I brushed on half of Amico's seaweed. Then I let that dry and I brushed one third Amico seaweed. I let all that dry and then I did about a one inch layer of Amico indigo float. And then I did um, about a half inch uh, doppi, doppling, do, dropping, I don't know how to say it. Uh, patting on um, the light flux. So there you go. And I made these uh, this combination before and she really, really liked it and that's what she wanted me to do. So um, there you go. I'm really happy with that. Now, this, this I'm going to talk to you a little bit about because this was a mug that I did in my last firing and it is, again, the Smoky Mountain Mist by Opulence, but I'm having trouble with crazing. So what I ended up doing uh, on the inside, it was all crazed at the bottom. So what I did was I just took a brush, a uh, fan brush, I dipped it into my, into, my, into my glaze, and I just brushed. I, I brushed the inside, and then I let it dry, and then I thought, hmm, you know what I'm going to do? I just did a total one brush 
over the over the whole outside and the whole inside and it has repaired and fixed every flaw that I had in the pot. I am so happy with how these turned out. That was all crazed on the bottom and now look at it. It is just smooth and nice and perfect. And I'm hoping all six of them, because I have six of them, otherwise they were headed for the trash bin, but this is a refire and it worked out absolutely perfectly. So there you go. So if anybody's wondering whether or not um, a refire works, it absolutely does. I'm learning more and more about it as time goes on. Um, and, you know, I think I just made a mistake. These were the ones I refired, and I'm not happy with them. I have two sets in here, and I must apologize. I did not refire these. These were just a single dip into into Smoky Mountain Mist. I'm, I got confused with these ones here. So let me go back. This was not refired. This is just a really good firing. I didn't have the glaze in there for very long, probably one, maybe two seconds, and then I took it out. Okay, so these are the ones I refired, and I'm not very happy with them. Now you can see that there's still a little bit of crazing um, or, uh, on the bottom of these. Again, I, I took some glaze and I just brushed it on the full outside and full inside. And I'm, some of them are okay and some of them are not okay. So I'm not, you can refire things. They are certainly better than they were. This has turned out okay. This one, you see, the, see that crazing on the bottom? And that's how the glaze is pulled away from the body of the cup. Uh, there was some on the outside of one of these, and I see that my re my um, painting over it again has, has corrected that. But they were all like that. So you can see that it has fixed it to a point, but not great on this one. I'm not going to fire it a third time. I'll just sell these as singles, and if people want them, great. They get them as is. And these are the last three mugs of, of again... Um, Smoky Mountain Mist single dip. They're perfect. They turned out really, really nicely. So that's it. My kiln is empty. I hope you've enjoyed this. I tried not to make it too long. We're just around half an hour. So thank you all very much for watching. Um, I will be firing my kiln again uh, in the next couple of weeks. So I'll have another video for that to show you if you're interested in watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like. If you have any comments that you want to make or any questions that you have for me, I will check in every once in a while and, uh, and I will see your comments and respond accordingly. And I thank you very much. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can do that as well. If you don't want to, that's okay too. I don't have any problem with that. So thank you all very much. Have a really wonderful day. And um, just go out and make some fabulous pots. Bye.